So let's just go through some of the grafting basics. Um, um, socket grafting, um, simple socket preservation is, is extremely important in today's environment. Number one, it prevents future bone loss and ridge resorption. As I've already mentioned, when teeth are lost, bone will shrink. How much? It depends on the patient, but it will shrink, which complicates our situation. For those of you who are not placing implants today, a couple of the reasons why you're not is you're concerned about the anatomy. You're concerned about the mandibular nerve and your uh, mandibular canal and nerve, and you're con concerned with the sinus. So if we're able to maintain bone ahead of time, it allows us uh, a better foundation to for future implants. Um, socket grafting helps support adjacent teeth and of course implants. Um, it helps us plan for future options, such as implants or fixed bridges. Um, we've all had situations where we see concavities created in, in even in our conventional uh, pontic designs. Uh, fixed prostheses might have a poor aesthetic without the presence of adequate bone. And again, today we're going to demonstrate some, some very good techniques where we have all four walls intact, or if we're missing a facial plate of bone. And we can predictably grow bone today in, in nearly 100% of the time, as long as we follow the correct recipe that we'll demonstrate today. And we like to say that it sure is easier to preserve now instead of creating bone later. When patients lose a tremendous amount of bone, oftentimes we refer to our surgeon or our periodontist for a much more invasive procedure. Uh, where we'll take bone from the chin or from the ramus or even from the rib or the hip to try to build bone. So these simple uh, procedures sure make it easier uh, on the patient down the road. And uh, can, it helps us to avoid additional surgeries. The procedures that I'm gonna demonstrate today are simple, safe and effective, but they are technique sensitive. And so I want you to, to follow through carefully and I understand that, that these webinars are recorded. Um, and so if you need copies of them, um, I, I think that you're able to, uh, to obtain those. So, uh, oftentimes I'll hear, well, my patients won't, won't pay for the grafting procedure. They, they can't afford it or the insurance won't pay for it. And you have to remember that patients' financial situations can change with time. And as professionals, we owe it to our patients to discuss options with them. Of course, we can't make the final decision for our patients, but I think if you uh, make the patients understand the importance, uh, the critical importance of socket preservation, um, they will accept treatment. Uh, but of course, there are some financial ramifications here, and, and hopefully we'll be able to, to demonstrate that. Um, and you can provide this service at a very cost-effective um, uh, uh, means for, for your patients. So very quickly, what are the current bone augmentation materials today? Autogenous, the gold standard. Autogenous means from the patient's own body. As I mentioned, from the ramus or from the symphysis area, from the hip, um, we, we, can, we can actually harvest bone from a second site. This is the gold standard. It has this, the, the proper uh, DNA, um, um, uh, protein-rich platelets, protein-rich uh, fibers, uh, the bone building blocks of, of repositioning. But I think it's very important before we begin that, and I tell this to all my patients, um, bone is constantly changing over in the body. It, it's not stagnant, it's not a piece of concrete. It's constantly being uh, changed over. And so when you explain this to the patient uh, clearly, uh, it makes the process uh, more reasonable to them. So what I'll tell my patients is when we put a graft material in a socket, uh, so to speak, uh, what, what will happen is there are cells in the body, we know them as osteoclasts, will actually invade that, that graft material and eat it away. And simultaneously different cells, we know them as osteoblasts, will lay down new bone. So um, bone building is a process in the body. Again, use the analogy if you break your arm. You're in a cast for six weeks and that bone uh, heals and mends and is very, very strong. So regardless of, of which of these four materials we use, um, the body is going to change it over in a period of time. So autogenous graft is from the patient's own body. Allograft is bone from the same species. Cadaver bone, bone from another human. This is harvested, cortical or cancellous bone. What does that mean? Cortical is the hard outer shell. Cancellous is the medullary bone. Um, um, our allograft materials are cortical cancellous 
and can be mineralized or demineralized. This is an often a, this is often a point of confusion. What does that mean? Mineralized means that the calcium and phosphorus naturally in the bone are 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 maintained. Demineralized meaning that the bone is processed so that these uh, many of the of the uh, chemical processes are are removed from the from the bone. So. In today's environment, we're using normally using a mineralized cortical cancellous um, allograft material. It's very, very safe. Uh, it is from another human, and you may have patients that will um, will back off of that. They, for whatever reason, religious reasons uh, or fear, um, there really should not be any fear factors because, again, whatever we put into that socket is going to be replaced in a very short amount of time. When patients may have a problem with using bone from another human. There are two other types of graft material. Uh, the next one is called a xenograft. That's from another um, species. Bovine, porcine, pig, cow, uh, even a horse today um, um, is used in certain situations. And finally, alloplast is a synthetic material. It's usually uh, a tricalcium phosphate, uh, hydroxyapatite material, calcium apatite material. These are synthetic materials made in a laboratory um, that work very well in my hands and we'll demonstrate them um, uh, throughout the program today. The types of bone available and the products used for each category types, um, again autogenous bone is the gold standard as I said, but there's a second surgical site. There's uh, a second um, area of the mouth that's going to be so uh, sore. There's also increased cost in harvesting that bone. Um, Another really, really, really cool um, product that we've been using uh, for a little while now is the Smart Dentin Grinder. Um, and you can, you can get information on this from Golden Dent uh, at the end of the program. Here we're taking the roots of teeth, the dentin of teeth, grinding them through a special process and using this material as an autograft. It's the patient's own product. And so we're getting very, very quick turnover uh, into natural bone. So instead of waiting maybe three or four months or five months for bone to uh, turnover, um, where we can use it for implants or whatever, we can wait seven or eight weeks and we're finding that we're getting great turnover. And I'm going to demonstrate this. It's a really cool product uh, in a little bit. Allograft. Cortical cancellous, we talked about this, mineralized, demineralized. Um, what we'll do is uh, uh, cancellous bone will resorb quicker because it's porous. Cortical bone, the outer shell will take longer. And we want a process to occur when we're getting bone turnover as the osteoclast eat it away and osteoblasts lay down new bone. So the allograft will act as a matrix for new bone formation. Very, very predictable. In the past, there may have been some concerns, but in today's environment with FDA controls, there really is no um, um, scientific concern of, of, of harming a patient using um, cadaver bone um, when we're doing socket preservation. Allograft comes in um, a, a particulate. Again, it's a mixture of mineralized um, cortical cortical bone and cancellous bone. It's like a powder, um, usually 250 to um, 1,000 microns. And it's a dry powder. We can wet it with uh, sterile saline or sterile water. And it will kind of form a gel, which allows us to carry it to the site. Uh, you can buy it in different um, sizes, a half a cc or a full cc or even more. Um, and uh, it works very, very well, especially when we have a facial wall that's missing. There's also um, um, uh, allograft that's packaged already as a putty material. So it has a collagen um, bi binding uh, material there, and it's in a syringe. So it makes it very easy to take this, this cortical cancellous bone and just inject it into a socket site. Um, so if it's something that, that is uh, more convenient for you, you may find this. But again, at our, at our University of Detroit Mercy programs, you're allowed to use all these products. We let you, we let you use all the products on, on different patients to find out what you feel is most comfortable for you. Xenograft, um, 
the 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 biggest one is BioWAS. Uh, it is very very popular um, popular in Europe, popular in Australia. Um, was popular here. I personally don't use um, the the bovine material because I have found in my hands that um, the the uh, the cortical bovine particles do not resorb very well, and so I don't get a good bleeding uh, point when I'm placing implants. That's my opinion. Um, and so I'm not going to discuss it today. As I said, I'm going to show you the products that I use very routinely and very predictably in my, my practice. Synthetics. I do use alloplastic materials. Um, I think they are a wonderful alternative, and I've never had a patient say, oh, no, no, I don't want that in my mouth. It's made in a laboratory. It's very safe and effective. And I have found that the products that I use um, have, have great turnover and have given me great, great results. Um, over the years, over the last 10 years. Um, something that, that you may want to just take note of, and this is, this is a big one, uh, it's called an osteogen plug. And the osteogen plug is a very, very effective way of socket preservation. It's a very, also a very cost-effective way, and Kurt at the end of the program can discuss this product with you and the cost. But this is a bioactive material of calcium apatite, and it's, it's, it's concentrated in a bovine Achilles tendon matrix. And what it does is it actually mimics the organic and inorganic components of physiologic bone. And it allows for a scaffolding of keratinized tissue um, to develop. What does that mean? It means that when I have a socket, uh, a, a, um, a waffle cone, all four walls are intact, and I take this material, which is has some substance to it, and I, I um, place it into the socket. I don't need a membrane on top because the the um, the matrix that that is created with it allows that scaffolding of keratinized tissue. This is different than any other graft material that I'm going to show you, which must be protected by a membrane to prevent invagination of epithelial tissue into that. We all know how a socket heals. It heals from the apex towards the crest. And so it's always a race between bone formation and epithelium ingrowth. And epithelium grows very, very fast. Epithelium will grow a half a millimeter a day. Um, and so uh, it's imperative that we protect our graft material. With this particular product, it's very cost effective as I mentioned, but it also allows me to get an extremely predictable result. I've done lectures around the country on this product. I've done a lot of histologic evaluation, and we do get bone formation in three to four months using this product. So keep this in mind, um, and you can talk to Kurt at the end um, from Golden uh, Dent uh, on the Osteogen plugs. Another great product that I've used for over 10 years is a product called Cirrusorb. Uh, it is a synthetic tricalcium phosphate material. And again, remember what I said, osteoclasts are going to eat this away and osteoblasts are going to lay in new bone. So it, it's very biocompatible. I don't get a lot of post-operative complications. I do get tremendous creation of bone. It's also um, um, a very, very um, objective, in, radiographically objective, meaning you can actually see over a period of time, how this, this material changes over uh, from a, 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 a opaque material to a normal looking bone product material. Uh, it is osteoconductive. It is allowing for a scaffold to, to take effect. And so again, if you want a synthetic material, an alloplastic material, this is a wonderful, wonderful product for you to use and we'll demonstrate it in a few minutes. Membranes, basically, there's two types of membranes. Before I begin that, what I want to tell you is a collagen plug is not a membrane. A collagen plug turns to snot in a couple days. It will not prevent invagination of epithelial tissue into your graft material. So a collagen plug is not what you want to use in these techniques. As I mentioned, I think maybe the third time now, I'm going to show you techniques that have been very, very predictable for me, but it's a recipe that must be followed. Uh, if you take shortcuts, that's when we have issues with uh, bone not forming, and it becomes very frustrating for us as practitioners when we don't get the results that we expect. 
So types of membranes, there's basically two types of membranes, a resorbable and a non-resorbable. Non-resorbable means that uh, the membrane has to be removed. And I usually will remove my membranes in, in six weeks after placement. All it does is it prevents invagination of epithelium into the, the grafted site. We, we, the literature will say we use a non-resorbable material where we can't get primary closure within two millimeters. Um, and the second type of membrane that we'll talk about is a resorbable membrane. Well, that's kind of self-explanatory. It's a membrane that will resorb on its own. Now, there's many different types of membranes out there. And as your sales reps come through, they're going to tell you, well, you know, uh, we have a product that's just as good. It's less, ex less expensive. You need a membrane that's going to be maintained for at least six weeks. So the question you should have for your, your reps are, how long is it going to last? If they don't know that answer, then I wouldn't use it. Um, one of the products that, um, that we use, and we'll get into it in a few minutes, is a long-acting resorbable membrane, something that if you want just one membrane in your practice to prevent invagination of epithelium, um, I'll show you what I think is really, really good. It's kind of unique uh, because it lasts a long time and it, it's not um, resorbed quickly and it does, uh, does protect the graft material. The membrane maintains space for the graft material, um, sequesters PDGFs and P, uh, bone morphogenic proteins, uh, creates a barrier, as we said, from invagination of epithelium, protects the clot, and assists in wound healing um, and, and protects the site. I think that if you're going to use one product, one membrane, have a long-lasting resorbable membrane. And the one that I strongly recommend is a product called EpiGuide. Uh, it's a polylactic acid material. It's trilaminar. It will last a long time. You can leave it exposed and it will not resorb to the outside environment. So most resorbable membranes, you have to get primary closure within two millimeters, but this acts as a long acting resorbable membrane. What does it all mean? Recommendations, what to use and when. So allografts, we talked about putty or particulates that you can, you can wet, osteogen plugs, uh, synthetic, uh, tricalcium phosphate. The Smart Denton Grinder is an um, a, um, a autograph material. Um, and the membrane that we're going to talk about is EpiGuide uh, products for the cases.